Well, hey everybody, it's 3 p.m. and it's time for Dinner with Nanny Bubby. And do you see what I have here in front of me? This is absolutely incredible. This is, I actually had five of these. I gave one to the gardener this morning. These are Armenian cucumbers that I pulled out of my garden this morning. This right here, this Armenian cucumber. Hey, Marianne Garrow, so nice to see you. So nice to see you here. Thank you for joining us today. Well, we've got a, a big uh, class reunion going on with you and Mark Goldberg every day. It's wonderful. And Sue Rainish is here. Hey, Sue. Um, so this Armenian cucumber came out of my garden today. I put it on a scale. It weighs six and a half pounds. And um, this one right here, look at this. This one is almost six pounds. Hey, Lucy. Hey, Heather. Uh, these, this is almost three pounds and this one is three pounds. And boy, I want to tell you just a quick story since I've been in the storytelling mood here these last couple days when you've been joining me is that, uh, two weeks ago when I went out there, there was not a single cucumber and I'm like, the bees are not getting to my cucumbers and you know, I can't grow cucumbers if the bees are not pollinating. Hey, Cynthia. Um, yeah, alien veggies, they dropped in. What is really alien, can I just say to Cynthia before I finish this story, is that this, which is nearly five and a half pounds, this one is six and a half, whoops, can't, I can't even hold it with one hand, is literally was hanging on just one thin stem that was no bigger than your uh, iPhone or Android cable power cord. That is about the length of it. Um, uh, it is just absolutely, absolutely amazing. So I said to the farmer this morning, I said, listen, we need to check. We've got to cut away the edges because I have looked inside and I don't see any cucumbers. And I'm really concerned that the bees have not been getting to them. And if they haven't, we need to figure this out. And I said, and I'll be right back because I have to run in to go to the ladies room. So I ran into the ladies room. And I came out and she had left the area of the cucumbers and she was kind of off to the side. And I said, did you find any cucumbers? And she said, nope, not a one. And I went, oh, and then she pointed and standing on the corner of the little bed were these. And I had five. I gave her one because what am I going to do with all this? Like I can't, I cannot freeze this. And Brenda is going to be taking one as well. Um, uh, can I share photos of the plants? Yeah, I guess I can. You mean the cucumber plant? Is that what you want? Be a little, be a little more specific, Cynthia, and tell me just a little bit more about what you're, um, about what you're asking. Frank is here. Yvette Rooker is here, and so everybody is finding us and joining in. And I'm sure that everybody is blown away at these cucumbers, as was I. What's really great about these cucumbers is that I open them up, I seed them. And in fact, I'm gonna set these over here because the recipe we have for today is just a little, uh, it's shorter than normal. So let me just um, grab, I wasn't planning on doing this, but I think it's a great idea. I wanna see, I wanna show you how I, hold on, at least you can hear me. I know you can't see me because I am the cameraman. I just wanna rinse off the outside. So I've come to learn that an Armenian, I'm back, <laughs> that an Armenian cucumber is actually a merging of a honeydew and also a, a regular cucumber. And you can tell by the outside that it has that cucumber look or that uh, honeydew look uh, of the shell, but the shell is edible in these cucumbers and they're not um, actually on on the honeydew, let's see. Uh, I thought I saw Cynthia post some. Oh yeah, uh, show these on the plant in the garden. Oh, I did. I'm posting a reel. I'm posting a reel. I mean, they're cut now, but you will see the little ones. And I'm going to show you in in about by oh, I would say next Wednesday, honestly, maybe even Sunday or Monday, the little ones that I'm posting in reel because they grow two inches a day. So if you can imagine if Two weeks ago, I was gone and nobody clipped this cucumber. 
two weeks ago, it was only maybe this big and two inches, two inches, two inches, two inches, two inches. And it grows in width at the same time, about a half an inch in width. Um, and so you'll see just these little cucumbers. They're in my reel. I'm going to post the reel in the morning, but you will see how tiny they are. And then, you mean, blink of an eye and here they are. So let me grab a, a grapefruit spoon, which is what I use to seed it. Let me get the compost basket. Actually, I wasn't planning on doing this, but let me do it for you. And here is the grapefruit spoon, and here is a bowl uh, to put it all off onto. And I'm glad you can hear me, even though you can't see me. And there I am. Okay, Brenda, grab your grab your favorite cucumber. Brenda is grabbing her. Did I take the one you wanted? It doesn't matter. Okay, I'm going to use this one because it's a little bit smaller. So. What, come come talk about this, like when you saw it, what did you say? These are just the most amazing cucumbers and they are so tasty. I just, you can do like, you can make like five salads out of this. Five? <laughs> <laughs> I think that six and a half pounder could feed everybody at Carabas for 10 days. I mean, it's, it's like, I don't know why I said Carabas. I don't go there at all. But anyway, well, in, enjoy it. Remember, you can freeze it, which I'm going to show all of them today. Actually, while you're here, could you do me a favor so I don't have to leave them one more time because I keep walking away from them? Could you grab me a one-gallon Ziploc bag? Sure. Thanks. Okay. So she walked in at exactly the right time. And actually, you guys should say thank you, too, to Brenda only because – she usually leaves at 10 to 3. You know how different, I mean, Frank could tell us this on traffic. Like if you leave 10 minutes earlier, you beat the traffic. Hey, Tawny Bennett and Joy Gallo is here. But if you wait till after 3, she can't get back to Henderson. Thank you so much. Oop, there it is. Thank you. And I said, can you just please, because I really wanted her to have the cucumbers. I said, can you please wait just 10 minutes, five minutes, and just leave a little bit later so everybody can see the big stack of cucumbers. So this is a grapefruit spoon. Thank you so much for doing that, Brenda, as well as a thousand other things. She gave me medicine today. She gave me a salt drink, which actually I must have been really dehydrated. So I'm feeling so much better. Thank you. Bye. I seriously, for the first time, debated not coming because I just was feeling so horrible. And of course, it gets in your head that, you know, you've got the Delta variant <laughs> and you start really getting scared. Not that I'm really scared, but I start getting sad. Like, no, I don't want to go through this, but it's gone. So and I'm very happy. All right. So I am taking all of these seeds and because they got so big, they get a little bit orange, right? So there we go. And now I'm gonna cut through this. You can see how empty that is, right? There you go. There you go. Lucy says, does it taste more like a cuke or a honeydew? You know what? It tastes like a combination. So it, it truly tastes like a combination. It tastes like a cucumber with a hint of honeydew. And the skin is completely edible. I'll show you. Not afraid to eat the skin for you. Look at that when you cut it like that. Isn't that beautiful? Um, and it chomps like a cucumber too. Um, yum. Okay, I don't mean to chew or talk with my mouth full. Okay, but I really, I want to get through this because I really want to show you this handy dandy little trick that we do here in the house since I started getting these Armenian cucumbers growing. And I will take a picture next week before I cut it of these huge cucumbers hanging off a power cord, basically. A, you know, a stem the size of your iPhone power cord is just miraculous. So, okay. And Jennifer is here. Hey, Jennifer. So how much fun, speaking of Jennifer, I'm just thinking about how much fun we had yesterday with the, flex, with the flexible recipe. I love that. And I did not post that online, uh, a picture, because the truth is, is that fish steamed in parchment packets, when you open it up, it is not the most beautiful thing to look at. The parchment paper gets a little burned, um, you know, it gets browned, and the fish gets very white, and even the scallions lose a little bit of their color. And if I'd had the opportunity to put something fresh on the top after it was opened, 
it would have looked much better, but my house was starving. Everybody just dug in. And by the time I really, it just, it was not a pretty picture. I can tell you that. So, okay. Uh, so that's why I didn't post it, but I am going to tell you, hi, Teresa, we missed you yesterday. It was absolutely delicious. Like your idea of the fresh blood orange and the basil combined, the olive oil that we use, and then the soy or the uh, coconut aminos in there, that fish had the most magnificent flavor ever. It was delicious. So um, I will get that. The recipe is basically done. We're just behind on our recipes getting them posted, but I will get that done. And I'm going to change out the, the flavors of olive oils and uh, post that up in um, Gather. So, okay, I've cut these in little spears, as you can see. Just go down and cut them lengthwise. And now I'm just going to cut across and make cubes. Hey, Lisa. And I'm making cubes just like this. And I know you've all heard me say this before because I say it all the time. You take these cubes such as this, and you put them into the one gallon Ziploc bags. And um, you freeze them. And then in the morning, you reach in and grab yourself a handful of these cucumbers that are frozen. You put them in with your favorite chocolate or vanilla protein drink, a little almond milk. You let these be the ice cubes and you froth it all up and it, it just is so delicious. You know, I to ice cubes sometimes when you do that, it makes them very icy instead of really blended and creamy. But these make it really blended and creamy. And so I take this and I take the bag, I put it in the freezer. And I believe me, you think to yourself, how am I going to use all these cucumbers? Then I will give some away for sure. I'm already given two away and look how much I've still got left. My nose is itching. I apologize. <laughs> uh, but the point is, is that um, we go through, if, you know, think about this, a handful every morning. Tom takes one handful and I take another. We're through the bag, right? So there's that. So that's how I, I fix with these. And now we are going to move on to the spicy plum salad. So hope you guys enjoyed that. It, it was just amazing. And here's a little bite. Very, very good. Okay. So Linnea said, oh, she's back. I thought she was gone. Well, how long were you gone, Linnea? What is today? Thursday. And you left on Saturday. So you were gone for five days. And just uh, asking Linnea if she saw the KLAS episode where I used her charcuterie board to make taco charcuterie. And so just waiting to hear that. So I'm going to swallow now. All right, here we go. So the first thing we're going to do is make the dressing. And what we're going to make it with is the jalapeno pepper. And I have to put gloves on because if I don't, invariably, I will four hours from now, reach up to rub my eye, take my eye makeup off or anything like that, and I will get whatever oils from that jalapeno are left on my hands into my eyes, and I absolutely hate that. Or I will pick up these plums, and they will have the taste of jalapeno. So uh, we do not want that. I know you don't want to see me struggle with that today. And, okay, here we go. So... We're gonna chop the jalapeno, and I'm gonna grab a piece of paper towel. There we go. And put that underneath so that it doesn't get into the cutting board. I should have parchment, but I didn't grab it in time. Okay, so I'm just gonna do thin slices of these jalapenos like this. Can you see? Have this, um, hey Arlene, hey Joy Gallo again. Okay. Lin, uh, Linnea said, I did. Your board was beautiful. Thank you so much. It was so much fun. I got really good feedback. And I really thank you for your ideas. And for those of you who have joined Gather, let me tell you what's really great is that we all share these amazing ideas in Gather with Nanny Bubby. And it, it just is fantastic. So um, invite your friends to, to Gather for sure. Judy Woods has you know went on a tirade and invited about 50 people which is great but i am trying to get 42 more people to like 
this page that you're watching me on, the Nanny Bubby page. And if I get 42 more people, I will be over 2,000. And I'm told that the Facebook algorithm will start notifying you much faster. And, you know, and also besides that, you may have friends that you think would actually really enjoy being here and having the fun with us that we have. So all kinds of good things happen. So what you do is you go into community. Up at the, There's a little bar, a toolbar up at the top of the Nanny Bubby page. And it says about, it says home, and then it says community. Tap community. And then you can invite, um, it says invite friends. And you can invite your friends to like the Nanny Bubby page. And I know it works because I did it on someone's phone the other day. So I'm just trying to get 42 more people. Let's see, Lene had seven more friends uh, join us for just today. Oh my, that's great. That's awesome, you guys. That's And that was on Gather, right, Roseanne? That was on Gather. So as we were talking, what I'm doing is I'm pulling out the center, which is really just sort of a, a rib. It's It's just heavy skin, almost like what the pith would be on a lemon or a lime. It's kind of bitter. And so I'm taking that out and that's going to be it for the jalapeno. And now I'm just going to chop it in really tiny dices and I'm going to stick it into this bowl. There we go. So thank you, Lene, for that. And Judy Woods, I don't see Judy here, but if somebody sees Judy pop on, make sure you tell me so that I can thank Judy for the work that she did. But not but, but and. We are still trying to get 42 people to like the Nanny Bubby page. So if you can, go to Nanny Bubby, where you are right now. Go up at the top to the toolbar where it says about. It says, there's Judy. Okay, Judy. Um, thank you so much. All of your people were noted, and we welcome them. And so all of you, if you see the welcome, please go there and um you know, type their names at so their name is hot so they get notified that you're welcoming all of them. And uh, that that's really awesome. Everybody is just such a great community here. Okay, 42 more people till we get to 2000. So let's, let's, uh, let's do that together. Okay, so we've got the jalapenos in this pan. Okay, in the, in the bowl. And now we're gonna take everybody's favorite kitchen tool, which is my lime juicer. I, oh, that dropped. I love this so much and I thank Cynthia Berman for turning me on to the juice man. I absolutely love this tool and you're gonna see why in just a minute. I found a nice juicy plum, by the way, because yes, or not plum, lime, because yesterday's lime, hold on. Yesterday's limes were tried out. It was just awful. Isn't that funny how that happens? So here's the lime. It's nice, nice, and nice. I'm going to take these gloves off, put them in the compost bowl. I'll take them out later, but just to get rid of them. Um, and those limes just had no juice in them. Okay, so what we're going to do is, oh, <laughs> it's alive. Okay, here we go. Let me take off. Let's see how this works here. Okay, there we go. All right, let me make sure this is up. There we go, all right, there we go. Can you hear it? I love it. Hey, Peter Guzman, nice to see you. Peter was in Dodger Stadium with my husband over the weekend. I don't even wanna ask, but they had a wild and crazy time. I hear they have lots of labs, these guys. Okay, here we go. Let's take the other half. And they saw two winning games, which is great. Two really, really good games. Okay, let's see. So you can see how it just cleans the line, but I like it to go the opposite direction. There we go. And really clean whatever juice is left. There we go. And let me pull this the other way there we go that that cord was in the way okay so watch what happens this is my favorite thing to do keep your eye on the spout it's up right now but now I'm gonna push it down isn't that the coolest thing <laughs> I absolutely love this I don't know why I get the biggest charge out of this but I do I take it off 
make sure it's all out. There's no seeds with this. There's no pulp. It's just good old juice, whether it's orange, grapefruit, lemon, lime, it's awesome. We're gonna whisk this around. We're gonna add a little bit of salt to this. Salt really helps with the um, heat, believe it or not, of these jalapenos. It just helps temper it just a little bit, which I absolutely adore whenever there's something hot. I think that's why when you're like taking shots of tequila, that, that salt and that lime together just really temper the heat of the tequila when it's going down. And I don't know if any of you saw this, but on the, the Channel 8 episode, I finished the episode, I had a little shot glass of water and I had a bottle of tequila and I had a lime right there. And so I said, you know, a taco charcuterie board goes absolutely fantastic with a shot of tequila, don't you think, Rocky? And I grabbed that glass of water and I went like that and then I squeezed the lime in my mouth. Well, what's really funny is that the lime was so like super, super sour that, you know, I shook it off the way you shake off tequila and you should have seen everybody's mouths dropping. And I said, oh my God, I got you. It was just water. Because I don't think you're, you're supposed to drink alcohol on TV. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to get fired. But anyway, it was really funny. And um, I think they got a kick out of it. So there we go. And Patty Kennedy is here. And Frank is here. I Sometimes I thank you for being here twice because I'm not sure if I missed it the first time around. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we've got the fresh basil olive oil. Don't you love it? And we have fresh blood orange. Actually, recipe calls for that. Let me make sure it is basil. It is, let's see. Yep, basil and um, blood orange, which I think is amazing. I actually could use lime, but the lime juice is in here already. So while I am pouring, starting with the blood orange first, we're going to whisk. There we go. Okay. And a little bit now of the basil, because we are using chopped basil in this recipe. And as of now, I don't see any parsley olive oil at Temecula Olive Oil Company. So these are all the Temecula Olive Oils and that's it. So that's our dressing. There we go. So we're going to take this now and set it aside. And we are going to cut our plums. Put that right there in the front. And let's, I guess, you know what the best thing to do right now is let's chop our herbs because the cutting board is very thin, uh, very dry right now. So let's go ahead and take these herbs, this basil just slays me. It is so fresh smelling, I cannot get over it. And I cannot, I have to say, every time I smell it, because you know how aromas bring back a certain area or a certain decade or a certain time of your life. When I legitimately smell basil, it smells to me like what, you know, pot smelled like in the 60s like when you when you were in the dorm room and you walk by people's rooms you would like go, oh my god you know that this is what it smelled like to me so I have a feeling that kids in the 60s were not smoking the kind of pot that the kids are, are smoking today it really does it cracks me up I say it all the time right aren't you guys tired of hearing me say it um but who's here from the 60s have have you smelled this basil lately it's just crazy okay so I'm going to have to come up with something new, right? I can't say that every time I make, I have the basil, but it just cracks me up. Okay. All right. All right. There we go. So I'm going to line these up. If you can't remember how to chiffon on the basil, I'm going to take the largest leaves and kind of line them up like that and then gather up the leaves, kind of roll them just slightly, put them in the center of this and just roll them the way that you roll a cigar. There we go. And to be funny, I should have said, and just roll them the way you do a joint, but that, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I was just thinking to myself, if I'm talking about how this smells like pot, I should have said that, it's very funny actually. But for anybody who's taking me seriously, please don't. Anyway, okay, there we go. I mean, sometimes I think I'm funny and I crack myself up and no, other people are not laughing. And other times I'm not laughing at all because I have no clue I'm funny. And there's that. What did Jennifer say? 
Um, I should smell it for sure. Yes, you should. And Frederick Domaney is here, Junior. There you go. At least Jennifer is saying is saying LOL. So thank you for that, Jennifer. Anybody else with an LOL or am I laughing to myself here? Okay, so there's the basil. Look how beautiful that is. So that is the best way. You saw how easy it was to ship an audit. And um, these just turned out absolutely perfectly, absolutely perfectly. They're going to look so beautiful on that salad. Um, Joy Gallo is smiling and laughing. And then we're going to take the mint and we're going to try to do basically the same thing. So here, let me go the opposite direction for the mint. Okay, Frederick Domaney, I see you here. Oh, Patty Kennedy is laughing. Uh, Christina Rubino is laughing. Hey, Christina Rubino. So nice to see you. Yes, it's funny, isn't it? Okay, who talks like that? What, like, who's doing food shows and talking like that? I don't know. <laughs> oh, and I shouldn't even admit that I was around in the 60s, but I certainly was. Okay, so uh, even though I was not a pot smoker in the 60s, I want to make that perfectly clear. And Lisa, who was here, would absolutely... Uh, confirm that. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but it just it was not for me and it still is not. But I like to make jokes about it. Okay. Okay. If you're laughing, I'll make jokes. All right. Let's see who's here. Brenda Mills is laughing. Joy Gallo is laughing. All right. I feel better, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. And the mint smells like Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. Yep, confirmed. Thank you, Lisa, very, very much. Okay, Lisa is my oldest friend. She has known me since uh, we met in third grade when we were eight years old. Can you imagine how blessed we are to still know each other and love each other no matter what happens uh, in our lives or what we go through, even if it's tough? Um, we always love each other through it. So I really um, feel very, very blessed to have a friend like that in my life. Okay, so here it smells, honestly, Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. How's that? Crossing the realm, right? Isn't that incredible? Okay, so you know what's funny is that, and I'm kind of rolling this on the board so it kind of clumps together like this, and because it, if it's clumped, it's better. So it's easier to cut. And I did, th these are from Nanny Bubby's Garden. Um, and I don't use the, the food grade hydrogen peroxide on these, but I do rinse them. And again, in our climate where it's so dry, just about 30 minutes before we hit the air, I wash them. I spun them in a salad spinner to get the excess water off. And then I put them in, under a paper towel folded on top of itself. Um, right in the middle for about 30 minutes out in our dry weather, weather, and these were perfect to chop. And now the last thing is this parsley. Now, by the way, I've been using this head of parsley um, or this bunch of parsley. Now, this is like maybe the fourth recipe I've made with you guys um, since last week, and I keep using the same bunch of parsley. Some of the things we made only required a tablespoon or this or that, and I think I'm about to hit the end of it. So let me just move around here. And this, I'm not going to really, I don't want to do these because really nothing is greener than parsley. I, I just love the color parsley. So if you take a look, let me put these all the way over here. If you take a look, so beautiful. This is the basil, which has, you know, a little bit of a lighter green and more um, like it starts leaning um towards like a lighter lime color to it then the mint the spearmint is kind of an evergreen it's almost like a a deep rosemary color so it has an evergreen and then this parsley is always kelly green and i think that's why you always garnish so much with the parsley because that kelly green when it comes to food comes out brings everything completely out so let's see um yeah, rolling joints and taking tequila shots, Christina. How crazy am I? What is that? Um, all right. So now let me move these over because I don't want any of the juices from the plum. Although if I get any juices at all, I'm going to put them uh, right into that bowl of the dressing. So what we're going to do, again, it's a spicy plum salad. So we're going to just slice very thin slices like this till we come up against the pit 
There we go. So how many of you know how to invite your friends to like the Nanny Bubby page? So can you give me a thumbs up? Just wondering, it, like, who knows how to do it and who does not? What made me think of it is Christina Rubino, because I feel like she knows how to do stuff like that. So I only need 42 more people to get to 2,000 on the Nanny Bubby Facebook page that you are watching me on right now. And what will happen, the good for all of us, is that the notifications become more intense and, you know, you get more. Uh, they just say that it, it beefs up the page so that, all of us will get, I'll get notified more readily when you left comments, which sometimes you're there and, you know, sometimes they're there and sometimes they're not. And I know I've seen them when we've been doing an episode. So it will be better for all of us if we can just get the page over that um, 2000. And that's not Gather because Gather has 420, I think, which is amazing. Um, because it only started a year ago, but it's the Nanny Bubby page that you're watching me on right now. So speaking of things that remind you of things. So my grandmother loved what she called elephant plums. She said, oh, look, there's the elephant plum. And I don't know why she called them that, but whenever I bite into one of these plums, um, I absolutely, yeah, Christina's giving me a thumbs up. I, I, it makes me think of my grandmother. So my grandmother, who I called Nanny, so I tasted these just a little bit earlier. And what I found is the elephant plums, which I have no idea, you know, I didn't see them called that in the grocery. So look at the richness of color inside them. It's really beautiful. And these have a really deep sort of cherry taste to them. This right here, which is a white plum, as you can see, is very tangy, very sour tangy. And it's really delicious, especially if mixed with the sweeter plum. And then this, which is just, I don't know what you call this actually, but if you cut into it, it's more orangey and it, it really has more sweetness to this one as well. And I think what's great is that when you combine uh, the different kinds of plums, what you get is the sour, you get the, the neutral, you get sort of that cherry taste. They almost, it's like taking a glass of wine. If you can sit with your glass of wine long enough with the very first swallow, you can taste all of those fabulous flavors that are hidden in the bottle. And when it comes to plums, there are so many varieties as well. You know, hey there, Susie Foreman. Um, There's so many varieties that what happens is if you just have to take a moment with every bite. And when you combine these different kinds of plums into your salad, then you really want to take the time to stop and taste it and enjoy it. So I'm just slicing away here. Very thin half moon slices. We're going to sprinkle right on top. So there's this, and I think I'm almost done here. So this is going to go over. You're going to see how nicely this all comes together. And there's not too much juice coming out of these plums, so I'm not going to pick it up with a grapefruit spoon and put it into the bowl here. Let me look up um, before I cut my finger off and see if there's anybody I missed. Thanks for the thumbs up, Christine. I really appreciate it. Um, and did I describe how to invite your friends properly, Christina? Just let me know. Um, or maybe you could describe it while you're typing there. Okay. So next Wednesday, Frank is joining us. Next Thursday, Harmony is going to be here. And she's going to teach us how to make a sushi bowl or a sushi salad, which is just a, a lovely, big, like a Niswa salad, but making it with sushi instead, which I absolutely adore. And it will be very fun to cook with her. I've cooked so much with my grandchildren. It's amazing that I've actually never cooked with Harmony. So I'm really looking forward to that. Okay. There we go. And then on Tuesday, I know I have something scheduled on Tuesday. Um, I have to take a look at what that is. But in the event that I don't that I don't have something already scheduled on Tuesday, then my cooking confidence coaching student, Lindsay Brene, is going to be here. If you remember, she won one of the weeks of the summer barbecue tournament. And so we're going to 
show you how I sort of help do a cooking confidence coaching class, which if you have any friends that would like to take the class, I'm open. I have my schedule has open for September and that is really fabulous. So I have Philip Stumpo here uh, from one an entertainer to another. You're doing a fabulous job. I'm now a regular. Wow, Philip, thank you so much. Thank you. That is so sweet of you. Well, wow, I have had a lot of people come in today. Thank you so much, Philip. I very, very much appreciate it. And we're so happy to have you here. And if you haven't already been to Gather with Nanny Bubby on uh, Facebook page, please go over there because that's really where all of the fun really happens. That really is. It's where it all is. So we post pictures. We post recipes. We tell jokes. We encourage each other. We love each other. I'm going to tell you that of all the communities that I've ever been a part of, I am so impressed. I really am with the quality of people that, A, come here every day. I mean, yesterday we did a recipe that we all cooked together, and it was a what I call a flexible recipe, a no-recipe recipe. And I had different items out here, and everybody chimed in in terms of what they thought that should go in, and we voted to see which would win. And it was just, it was just great. That was so much fun for me, especially. So I hope you do, you guys had so much fun too. And, um, and then also, um, when we go off in together with Nanny Bubby, there's just lots of fun. It's just a free, free wheeling, good time there. So Philip, if you haven't already joined gather with Nanny Bubby, please Run over there and ask to join, answer questions, provide your email, and you're in. And let's put this salad together. I, so, Frank, have you decided, let me ask this. So, Frank, who won the um, summer barbecue tournament one week, did, was unable to do his cooking week with me because he's on the road. He's an over-the-road truck driver, and he has not been home since he won. And he's coming home next week. Yes, Judy, it was so fun. He's coming home next week, and so we scheduled his uh, cooking day with me. So, Frank, what are you cooking next Wednesday? And while he's telling us, I'm going to load about two cups of this beautiful arugula. Frank, are you there? Let's see what he says. Yes, Jennifer, I am a cooking confidence coach and I hold cooking confidence coaching classes. And they're about six hours. Um, and it's not six hours at one time. I once, when I first started, I did do six hours at one time. It was great, but the woman I was teaching had a backache for two weeks. <laughs> and I did too. It's a lot to stand on your feet in the kitchen for six hours. So I broke it up in uh, three two-hour classes. We get about um, uh, a recipe per hour that we're able to work on. And if you ask me, well, what are you teaching? Well, this is why it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's a one-on-one -on -one VIP cooking confidence class. And what it is, is um, I meet women and men where they are in their cooking journey. Some are terrified to start. They don't know how to start. Others are great at main dishes and uh, great at entertaining, but don't know how to cook just daily dishes for their families. And so I meet them where they are in their cooking journey and find out where they want to go in their cooking journey. And then I help them get there. And it is just a blast. I have enjoyed so much. Comes with all kinds of free gifts if you sign up. By a certain time frame once you reach out to me and um, you get my special free gifts which include a Temecula a bottle of Temecula olive oil I can't believe we keep um, pushing them you think I own stock in the company or, or something so um, yeah so that's that's what I've been doing when I'm not here with you I'm teaching those courses and I just absolutely love it so Lindsay is one of my cooking confidence coaching students and I just adore her okay and she's young and she's got a young family and um, she was going to join last year. I need a bigger, bigger spoon. So I know you can hear me. Um, she was going to join one of our cooking classes that I did last year. And what happened is she got the grocery list and she went to the grocery store with it. She literally broke down and started crying because she didn't even know what some of those things were on the grocery list. She's had no experience shopping in a grocery store, she had no experience cooking, and um, 
she's been, you know, doing the Uber Eats and everything for her family. And she just knows it's not the healthiest way to go. And so she really wanted to change her ways. And so I was there for her. And give me a thumbs up if you think that's a great idea. Okay, I drizzled the jalapeno, lime, blood orange, and basil olive oil on the arugula. I'm just gonna toss it lightly. And you only want a little bit on arugula. Now arugula will hold up, but if you put too much on, it actually wilts very quickly. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take a mixture you know what I'm gonna do actually, and this is spontaneous, I'm gonna take these plums and I'm going to put them actually into the dressing, or at least half of them into the dressing, just like this, so that they get that flavor, that all that olive oil, the lime juice, look at that. I think that is amazing. Okay, now using Chef's Best Tools Clean Hands. I'm going to pull out the plums. And I'm literally just going to throw them all over. I will tell you what I think would be great on top of here is a little bit of feta. Just put all over it. Can you guys see this? Yep. Okay. And now a few of the plums on top. I'm going to reach in that fridge right now and put some feta which I did not put into the recipe, but I should have because this is absolutely great. And I think I'm gonna put just a little bit more, I'm gonna sort of layer this so that it looks a little prettier. There we go. Isn't that, I mean, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous, just layered like this? Oh my gosh. This will get a picture. As soon as we're done, I'm taking this outside where I have my photo area. And I'm gonna take this spoon and just drizzle a little more. Oh, this is so beautiful, it makes me wanna cry. There we go. A little more of the plums, a little more arugula, just on top. Get those last plums on. Oh, it's so beautiful. Why does, I mean, this makes me just wanna cry. It's so beautiful. I just love, and look, my grandmother's, these are the only ones left, my grandmother's elephant plums. See, you know, I had a friend who was cooking pasta sauce who literally said, she put her head over into the pot and she said, this is my grandmother right here in this pot. This is my grandmother. And you know, don't you just wish and hope that there will be something that you cook for your family that when you're no longer here, that they smell a recipe that you have given them and passed down and they go, this is my nanny Bubby, right? Like I live for that. Well, I live, I don't live to not be here anymore, <laughs> but I'm just saying, I, it's, it's a way of passing down your family's heart and traditions and love. And um, if you live love, if you've lived life right, they will love to do that. Okay, so on top of this, we're putting the basil, which I already put on. We're putting on the mint. And now just to give it great color, and I'm just gonna sprinkle this off on the side. Now I chose this gray platter because the green on this gray platter, look at that. The green on this platter is just absolutely amazing. Um, <laughs> her poodle jumped up and is watching me. That's so cute. I had to stop and read that. I was so confused for a minute. Okay, let me wipe my hands because we have one last topping to put on. Actually, two. Are you ready? Oh my God, I am so happy with this dish. Look at that. These are pistachios. I keep, I actually, I wanted to give you a, a tip, pro tip. Um, I keep my open pistachios in these OXO containers. Oh, thank you, Joy Gallo. Thank you, everybody who said. And I buy them at Kirkland. And they are the, I think they're wonderful, W-U-N-D-E-R-F-U-L at, you know, Smith's and everybody else. And, um, but these are half the price of that and twice the size. And so I buy them. I keep them once I open them in the OXO containers and um and they last forever but 
no pistachio in my house lasts forever. I mean, it is gone in a minute. So again, pistachio is green and beautiful. There we go. Just want to chop them up. Rough chop, as Ina Garden always says. Just And when you chop it, what it does is it opens it up to being more beautiful and green. Here we go. Okay. All right. Almost there. Ready? So it doesn't matter. Some are still whole. But we're going to just take them. Let me... Ah. Uh, let me move these over and bring the, the plate back. Actually, I think I can do it this way. Hold on. Can you see that? There we go. Okay, you can. All right, and I can even tip it down. If I lose my headband, you won't be unhappy, will you? So you can see more salad. Okay, isn't that gorgeous? And the pistachios on top. There we go. Keep a little bit of the, uh, this, this makes me feel so good. I was not feeling good today. I was thinking I wasn't even going to make it, but I made it. And being here with you all even made me feel so good. Okay, look how beautiful that is. And now the last piece is the sea salt. The sea salt came from somewhere fabulous, I think from France. And uh, Tanya Murray gave it to me. Look at that. Oh my gosh. So do I need to take a bite? Do I need to take a bite so that you guys can all see this? I need to, right? I need to take a bite. Ready? I just don't want to mess it up before it's beauty shot. That's what we call it on channel eight day. We say, did, you know, do we need to take it outside and give it a beauty shot? Okay. Are you ready? You guys give me a, give me a drum roll or give me a something. Give me something here. Drum roll, is there a drum roll emoji? How about just a drum emoji? Let me see some drum emojis real quick. Drum emojis, gorgeous out. Thank you, Judy Woods. Mm. Great plum. Ready, drums? Mm. There's something from Judy. There's Jennifer Tuttle with a thumbs up. Anybody else, drums, drum roll, ready? Hmm. Mm. Christina and Cynthia, everybody has drums. Good girls. Roseanne, okay. Mm. So you know what? Thank you, Susan. Oh, my God. Joy, everybody. Oh, my gosh. Let me tell you, the energy of those drum rolls makes a difference for everybody. But let me tell you about this. I took a bite. First thing that I got was the basil. Then came the mint. Then is the pepper of the arugula, right? Oh my gosh. Then the sweetness. So I, I had a sweeter plum that was in there. I didn't get any jalapeno in that bite, right? So should I try one more and see if I get a jalapeno? <laughs> okay, one more. And then it's going outside for a beauty shot before it, wilt, before it wilts. Okay. Let's try something with the jalapeno. All right, are we ready? Did somebody say yes? <laughs> Did somebody say drum roll, please? Okay, ready? Here we go. Okay. Mm. So what happened is the jalapeno flavor is there but they're diced so small and the acid from the lime actually cut the really hotness of the jalapeno and it's just so mild and so beautiful and it was absolutely delicious. And I wish you were all here because I would love to put this out in the middle of the table and have you all come and enjoy just an absolute beautiful bite of this. And actually we should, do something where all the gatherers that live in Las Vegas or all of those of you who don't live in Las Vegas who want to fly in. And we should have some big gathering where we bring some of this stuff and we can all take our forks and dig into some of everybody's favorite recipes. Anyway, that's it for today. Oh my gosh, I thought this was going to be the shortest recipe I ever did. And it's 352.
3.49 on my watch. I set that faster in the kitchen. Um, well, that's it for me. Remember, Tuesday will be Lindsay and my cooking confidence coaching class with her. Wednesday is going to be Frank. Thursday, Frank, you never did tell us what you're making. Thursday is going to be Harmony. Um, and um, I may have uh, an interview. So I am debuting a new series called Breaking Bread with Nanny Bubby. And I'm going to put that series on Instagram on, I don't know, like Tuesdays at noon or something like that. So I can run around the city and, and just like, you know, when I go to the farms in Temecula and I realize there's just so many fabulous foodie places to visit and to tantalize us. Why not go out and do that here? So I'm thinking about, um, I'm seeing if I can pull it off by Tuesday and start that series. So you have to start joining me on Instagram in the mornings. And if you can't get there, it'll be posted on IGTV. So you can go back anytime you want to view it. So that's it for me today. I have sticky hands from all of this, but it was well worth it. Anyway, thank you all so much for joining me on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Go out and, oh, wait, we got to stop. Jennifer said, I'm attempting finally to muddle a germane cucumber martini for friends tomorrow. Well, I don't know what a germane cucumber is. Just like I didn't know what an Armenian was. But, hey. Good for you, Jennifer. Keep at it. You know, food and cooking is a practice, just like yoga is a practice, just like ballet is a practice. And so for some reason, the marketing of our country has made us all believe that if we don't do it fast and easy, that we're doing it wrong. And that is not true. Cooking is a practice. And the more you do it, the more you learn, the better you get, and the more you grow. So good for you, Jennifer Tuttle. That is just awesome. And St. Germain, oh, St. Germain liqueur. That I know is absolutely fantastic. Okay, back to it. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Go out and spread love like butter. Bye, everybody.